Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of ghosts, hauntings, and other phenomena from the subreddits, r slash paranormal, r slash paranormal encounters, and r slash paranormal encounters too. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly who's peeking around the corner. When I was a toddler, I could see spirits and would often talk to them, whether it was directly or not. As I got older though, the ability kind of just disappeared, or so I thought. About three weeks ago, I was looking in the kitchen cabinets for a snack to bring to school. When I glance at the laundry room and see a black figure peeking around the corner. It had large white eyes and seemed to just be staring at me. I was frozen in my place and my heart was pounding so fast. I just had to leave the house and go to the bus stop. I didn't tell anyone about this. Cut to about a week later, I was doing the dishes. The way my sink is positioned, the light shines directly onto the steel and makes it easier to see what dish I have in my hand. But this day, the light suddenly got darker, like how it would dim if someone was leaning over your shoulder. This time, I wasn't rooted in place or scared, I was more annoyed because this thing was blocking the light. And I couldn't see very well. The moment I turned to look, this shadow was gone, like it had just ran away. I also told my mom about this incident, and she called me crazy. I got to sleep that night and had a weird dream about a man in his thirties. Who appeared in front of me. He said he was looking for me and that he had been waiting so long for me to see him. When I asked why he was looking for me, he just said, you'll see. And I woke up in a cold sweat. Just a few days ago, I was in the bathroom looking in the mirror. When the same figure kind of just showed up behind me. I could see it clearly this time, it had huge white eyes, no mouth, and weirdly slim limbs, and its torso was a little disproportionate to its body. I was fed up with whatever this thing was so I just flat out asked. What now? But it didn't say anything. Instead, it disappeared. I'm waiting for it to either leave me alone or give me an answer. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Disastrous Goal 2127 commented. So it's definitely not demon. You would know? Especially knowing you have already seen it. My guess is it's the man in your dreams, and he's purposely not showing you his true image. Maybe he has a good reason. Question. Have you found your twin flame? Or possibly might this be a relative maybe one you don't know? I do know that a friend had her love stay behind looking for her, as she passed to the next life. And he didn't know she died too. But now they found each other, of course he's a spirit. I don't know. Just truly depends on the feelings, will energy frequency you get from this entity. Henrietta 3 also commented. The Warrens always said you can differentiate a demon from a ghost because a demon. Even when it takes a human-like form, will always have something fundamentally wrong with it. E.g. no eyes or no mouth. Be careful. OP responded to Henrietta 3. That's interesting. I didn't know that at all. But won't a demon usually cause you to feel at least a little bit of fear? I've just been annoyed with it. Lovebird Mom advised. You won't always feel fear. Demons are very tricky and can fool humans. Just be careful. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What type of entity do you think OP interacted with? For starters I've always been fascinated with the paranormal, but never did any ghost hunts or anything. As a kid, I once felt like I encountered something, and always thought it was my imagination. But now I 100% believe something is out there. The apartment I've been staying at is new. I've been here for two years, and been the only tenant. I live alone besides my cat, which has been my saving grace through all of this. The first year of living here, I experienced nothing strange at all. But, April of last year that all changed. Everything started one morning when I got out of bed. I heard my washer going. Which is pretty strange to me as I never recall starting it and no way it would have washed for 8 to 9 hours. This still happens and it even happened today. 
I had people check the electric and my own washer dryer which is now only a year old. It only started to pick up from there. Which then turned into open and letting my cabinet slam shut in my kitchen. This only happens some nights when I turn into the bedroom. At first I figured it was my neighbors, until I put my own ear to my bedroom door one night. Forgot to add the cat sleeps in my bedroom with me. Sounded like it came straight from my kitchen. I put cameras up to catch whatever was going on, but I got nothing which led me to think I was going crazy. Until my girlfriend experienced the shower curtain moving in the bathroom. She thought it was the cat until she saw he was with me. As for my cat, he sticks with me like glue and I've noticed he has been staring at walls, for minutes at a time. And to be honest, it scares me. The cat even gets scared, at times, and just wants me to hold him. It's been getting worse. I've seen something moving out of the corner of my eye recently. And you figure it would be my cat, but nope. Every time I look he is no near where I saw something move. Please can anyone lend advice, cause right now whatever is going on here. It's picking up steam. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Marisolasis33 commented. Sounds like something changed. When you say you live in an apartment, it could be that a new neighbor has attachments that are now spreading out a bit. Have you, your girlfriend, or even a visiting friend been into occult activity, gone to a haunted location, brought home an object that could have something attached to it? Certain things invite them in. Otherwise, I would consider moving because someone brought something in, and now it's in your space. No cardiologist 9387 also commented. Dude, talk to some pastor or spirit guide, because I had the same problem 10 years ago, in the house I live at that time. And it seems similar how it happened to us, my wife and I. Eventually there was even physical marks on her and I. And we had very stressful days, and I had to go to a chiropractor to correct my posture and get messages. My body went through a lot and I felt it. Act as soon as you can. OP responded to no cardiologist 9387. I'll be contacting someone today. Honestly feels like I'm being stalked, and it's pretty creepy. Hopefully, my local pastor can nip it in the butt. Okazed, questioned. What did you do? Before all this happened. OP responded to Okazed. Well, I work at a tire place and still do, so I don't know what could have caused this. Haven't been to any haunted locations around town. Possible that Tenet caused this this or now thinking back my ex, she dabbled in some sort of magic. She believed but haven't had contact in years. Edit, the first year I moved in here I did head to a cult museum in Las Vegas, but nothing came of anything during that year, now that I recall. A question I have could something followed me and now became active. GHSD404 responded to OP. Sometimes when you dabble into stuff, things show up, let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? Do you think OP has a haunting or is it something more mundane? I moved into my house two and a half years ago, and almost everyone has had some unexplained experience. Mostly hearing things, but a few times a man has been seen. So it started immediately and I've never been scared of it. Apart from one occasion. And I speak to whoever is in my house often. The past few months have been really rough and the noises have calmed down, until last night. We packed up the house to move, and then went to bed. I got up to use the bathroom and couldn't open my door, as a pair of shoes had been placed behind my bedroom door. It opens outwards. I forced the door open and it was shoes that haven't been used in a couple weeks, and I did not know where they were beforehand. There is no way they were put there by me or my husband, as we were both in the room. You can't even reach round the door to put shoes there, because there is a wall either side of the door, so it is very narrow. Has anyone experienced this? And is the activity worsening because of the move? Do they want me to stay? Why has this never happened in two and a half years and all of a sudden things are being moved now? Any answers are appreciated. Here are some of the comments, from this post. The dismissed commented. You can do something far more better for him if you like. Tell him that there's another way for him. He can very well remain, but he will always be bothered by the living and vice versa. 
One day someone may come in that tries to entrap him or do something he won't like. Whatever business he had no longer matters. All he's doing is just watching the living. That's not helping him in his own advancement. But there's a solution to this problem. Choose to go towards the light. The key is to accept his death and let go. There he will find true peace. He won't be bothered. This is the next step, and he should take it. It's for his own betterment. Choose to advance, don't be scared. There he'll be able to be seen and heard. Go home, anxious animosity also commented. Maybe they got settled with you all being there. Humans are creatures of habit. You are disturbing that by moving. Maybe ghost don't like change either. OP responded to anxious animosity. True, wondering if I should find a way to say goodbye. I've lived with him for a while now, maybe I owe him at least a farewell. Anxious animosity responded to OP. Is there a thing or place he favors? Maybe go there and explain you guys are leaving but you appreciate the time you've spent there. Let me know, in the comments. Do you think OP's ghost wants her to stay? This happened at my mom's current home. I don't live with her anymore, but at the time, I did. I was with my girlfriend, in my room and I asked if she wanted some food. She said yes. And being the teens we were, I made us some nachos. I went alone, and the whole house was dark. It's a really small house, basically the size of a large trailer, so there's not much space to be freaked out. Also, we had so many animals. Dogs, cats, and two birds. So they kinda kept me sane. I walked into the kitchen, flicked on the lights, and got to work. The living room was right next to me, and I remember seeing all three of the cats sleeping soundly on one of our couches. As I waited on the nachos to cook, I went into the living room and gave some pats to one of them, as he, Jax, flipped over on his back for some belly rubs. He's a weirdo, as most cats don't really like that. Anyways, I successfully handcrafted a plate of masterfully made nachos, and was headed back to the room. Turning off the kitchen lights behind me. I walk about 10 steps in the darkness, feeling a bit on edge, but nothing crazy. As I round the corner to my room I hear. Thud. 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 Thud thud thud. Right behind me. It was getting faster and louder and I could feel the floor vibrating with each step. It was so close behind me now that I could feel it. I pivot as fast as humanly possible and see nothing. The hairs on the back of my head and neck are going crazy. But the sound had just stopped. The footsteps were so heavy and human-like that my immediate thought was that my girlfriend was pranking me. Nobody was there, not a cat or a dog. My dogs always slept with my mom, but it wasn't unusual for them to go out for some water at night. However, her door was closed, so that was ruled out. I looked around for any sign of anything. Nothing at the end of the hallway either. Nothing. And if it was a cat, they would have made some noise fleeing down the 15 feet hallway. But it all stopped when I turned around. Mind you, this all happened in seconds. I didn't have it in me to stay out there for any longer. I had this pit in my stomach like a wave of fear washed over me. I shuffled into my room, and told my girlfriend. She didn't believe me. Still probably doesn't. Everyone just chalks it up to the animals, but I don't know. It didn't make sense. Any thoughts? P.S. Yes, the nachos were very good. Here are a few comments, from this post. Xylorgos commented. Sounds very interesting. I'm glad nothing seemed to harm you, but it obviously did scare you. It's these kinds of things that defy explanation that are the most frightening. Doesn't seem to me to be anything dangerous, just annoying. Glad the nachos were good. OP responded to Xylorgos. Thanks. I'm glad you thought so. I've had a few other experiences in that house, but none as notable as this. And yeah, it was pretty annoying stuff, things going missing and reappearing. As well as some dark thing in my closet, that I had to firmly tell to leave, and then it was gone. But no harm done, thankfully. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? What do you think ran up behind them?
I'm active duty military, and was stationed in Okinawa for three years. During that time, I had a lot of weird experiences. One day after getting back from work, my body was planning on coming to my barracks room to chill. So I left my door dead bolted open and told him to walk in when he got there. During that time I laid in my bed with my back to the door, just scrolling through my phone. When I felt something very clearly poke and drag a finger down my back. Naturally, I thought it was my buddy, so I looked back to greet him. But only saw an empty room, the door hadn't been opened or I would have heard it. And my friend wouldn't have been able to move fast enough to come in and out silently. Another time, I was drinking coffee or tea late at night, before bed. I didn't finish my cup but set it on my nightstand where it wouldn't fall or get knocked off, and passed out. Around 3 in the morning, I wake up to it crashing to the ground. Okinawa does get frequent earthquakes, but usually never bad enough to knock a cup off the center of a stand, otherwise I'd have woken up. Also, during my time there, lights in the room that weren't ever used. Frequently turned on by themselves or flicker. Things would get moved from their original spots. And despite never having sleep paralysis prior to my time here, I ended up getting it on a regular basis, at least twice a month. Since leaving, I haven't had sleep paralysis once. I have also felt an overwhelming sense of dread on a few occasions, out of the blue. Here are a few comments, from this post. Nathan4845 commented. I'm a contractor, currently living in Okinawa. While I definitely believe in the paranormal, and have a few experiences of my own. I've never had any experiences here yet. My buddy, who's married to an Okinawan woman, and lived here most of his life, has had many encounters. World War II Japanese soldiers darting across trails and disappear. Creepy shit. But have Divine also commented. A lot of US troops died there too, so I wouldn't be surprised with all the activity from both sides. My granddad was one of 12 survivors of a 200 group who fought there. It was really bloody. Low Asparagus 9649 chimed in. I lived there for a few years, and rented a house near Kadena. My daughter fell in love with the tatami floor. Yes, I knew it was not a bedroom, but ritual tea room. Downstairs, so she wanted it. The other bedrooms were upstairs. One day my daughter heard a clear voice say, hey, in her ear. She said it sounded like an American guy. Debru81 agreed. Yes, I can attest to Okinawa definitely having a lot of activity. A lot of my Marine Corps buddies have had paranormal experiences in their barracks there. Para Throway shared. I lived at Kadena Air Force Base in 1995 to 1999. I lived in a quad near the high school. Very spooky. The boonies were behind my house and you could hear weird voices speaking in a garbled language. My friends spoke Japanese and didn't recognize any of the words. Us kids discovered that if you leave your curtains open at night, something would knock on the outside of your window. This happened every single time, and we verified that nobody was around. My sister and I shared a bunk bed. She was freaked out one night, because she would always get irritated by any movement by the bottom bunk that would shake her bed. One night, when she was trying to fall asleep, she heard me get into the bottom bunk and then the whole bed started shaking like I was bouncing the bed. She yelled a few times, and finally hung over the side of the bed, to scream at me. I wasn't there. I was in the bathroom getting a shower. The best fun was high school kids would go ghost hunting, before that was even a thing. And explore the abandoned hotels and other properties. In one location, the fourth floor was supposedly haunted by poltergeist. As we climbed the staircase, you could hear lots of banging and loud noises from that floor. The entrance to the floor was covered by a board, but you could see into the floor. We saw an Okinawan girl looking at us. She seemed to glow green. When she turned away, we couldn't see the bottom half of her body. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. What do you think was making its presence known to OP? The stories so far have been intriguing. If you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our hauntings or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. 
Share in the comments what you think about the encounters we discussed so far. As a young girl, I was walking with my grandmother and saw a strange looking woman standing in the shallow water of the bayou. When I told her to look at the woman, she said she didn't see anyone. I pointed to the place that the woman was standing, and the woman waved at me. My grandmother said she still didn't see her, then asked me to touch her hand. When I did, she saw the woman and immediately told me to stay away from her. Because she was dead. That woman had drowned several years before. My grandmother used to know her. Here are a few comments from this post. Cat H2222 commented. That is really crazy. Did anyone in your family mention it again? She held your hand and then saw the ghost. Do you have any psychic powers? OP responded to Cat H2222. Not really, she never wanted to talk about anything paranormal with me. Or tell me any ghost stories, but my mom said that my grandmother would see a lot of stuff. I have so, so many stories I could tell. Nick07 Cool questioned. Whoa. Did you investigate it later? Like who was she? How did she die? Why did she come back? Why did your grandma ask you to stay away from her? And as you've mentioned in another comment, your grandmom could see a lot of stuff. So why didn't she see the weird woman, until you touched the woman's hand? If you haven't done any investigation yet, then I suggest that you should. If you've got the time, you could check in the local library, old newspaper articles, people who used to know your grandmother. And probably also knew about the weird woman, etc. Those are some great ways to do research. This way, you'll get to know who that was, and all the other mysteries related to it. VCTRLZZR420 also commented. I think you need to have a really open mind to be comfortable with that stuff. Maybe it was nice to her when was seen. Secret Brotherhood responded to VCTRLZZR420. No stay away from things like this. It's dangerous, you fool. These are things mortal beings do not understand and should stay clear of. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think about OP's experience? What do you think about her grandmother's reaction? I've lived in my apartment for three and a half years now. A couple of days after I first moved in, I was in dire need of a nap. So I went ahead and passed out. I was awoken by someone blowing in my face, Mind you I live alone. I got up a little shaken, looked around, and went about organizing my apartment. A few nights later, I was still getting situated when I glanced at the bathroom door. And saw what seemed to be blood splatter and then it faded. That's when it hit me that something really crazy happened here. Let's backtrack a bit. I grew up in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Born at the local hospital in 1973, and the apartment I was raised in, until I moved out three and a half years ago is haunted by a woman who was also murdered, in that apartment by her abusive husband. As we were told by the owner of the building, at that time. I've seen her, felt her and have heard her my entire upbringing in that apartment. She was very nice, but lonely. My parents still live in the apartment, and whenever I come for a visit. I feel her presence, it's like a long lost friend. So, after realizing my new apartment is indeed haunted, some might ask. Why do you stay? I stayed because living in New York is super expensive, and moving just wasn't an option. Slowly, but surely lots of things started happening, in the apartment. I would hear whispers, someone calling my name, or feeling like someone was standing by the kitchen sink staring at me. There are times as I shower, I know I am not alone. My niece and nephew come for a visit, and they will not go into the bathroom. Because they say there is a woman in the closet. Which is where I always feel someone watching me, as I fall asleep. I saw her once. She is tall, slender with blonde hair. But she wasn't wearing any clothes, and she looked really sad. A few nights after I saw her, she whispered. He followed me home from the park. I live two blocks away from Forest Park in Glendale, Queens. Here are a few comments, from this post. Trippy Declone one commented. Any more to this story, it's interesting not in the scary sense. But in the more cool ghost story that you have someone looking over you. 
I wonder have you been in a situation where you've felt protected by this ghost? OP responded to Trippy to clone one. Not necessarily protected, but rather being kept company. She likes to make her presence known. I feel like she knows when I'm down in the dumps. And then I will hear a rattle in the sink. Only once, was I scared. When I felt her sit on my bed while I was watching TV. I told her please don't do that, you are scaring me. She never sat on the bed again. Cellmates also commented. Wow, that's pretty freaky, but super sad about both those women. Do you feel comfortable there knowing this might be a constant thing you have to deal with? Is there a way you could ask her nicely to leave? OP responded to cellmates. I have thought about why this may be a constant. And cannot figure it out, I truly have given up and have grown to accept it. I have thought about asking her to leave, but I am used to having her around. My niece and nephew too, they are more comfortable being in the bedroom now, when I have them over. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. What do you think OP should do about her guest? Probably, the one I worked at was. When I saw the ghost of a patient, and wasn't going to back off. I was told by the supervisor of nurses, not to mention it to anyone. Who wasn't working with me that night. Then there was the fire in the trash can. Nobody was in the bathroom, when it started. We nurses had our own smoking area. And the patients had their own. We had to evacuate the whole wing. Seven floors. And guess which floor I worked on. You probably got it, seven. Then there was the witch. She was blind, long gray hair. Her eyes were a cloudy green. This all happened on third shift, over a four year period. Every nurse on the floor was afraid of her. She rang her buzzer one night. There were eight of us nurses on the floor. I was elected to attend to her. One of the other girls went with me. When we got to her, she said to me, you're not afraid of me are you? I told her no, I was not. She then said the fire department is on the way. I asked why she would say that. She then informed me, she could see them. I told her they were not coming, because there's no fire. She told me again, she could see them. About three to four minutes later, fire engines pulled up. Six of them. I have to admit she creeped me out, a little bit. There was no fire. A silent alarm went off, mysteriously. I went back in to talk to her about how she knew. She told me she was born with a veil over her eyes. If you're familiar with this condition, you know anyone born like this, can see things other people can't see. My great grandma, was born with it. But she wasn't blind. The lady told me there were people who died in the hospital, but weren't at rest. While she was there I and my friend, went in and talked to her every night. She was a very interesting lady. We then started finding out, nurses and doctors on other floors also would occasionally see people who weren't supposed to be there. But we couldn't talk about it. So yes, some of them probably are. Here are a few comments, from this post. Duchess of Marin commented. What an interesting encounter, she knew you weren't afraid of her. Hospitals are a likely place for being haunted. Most nurses I know, have stories about things which cannot be explained using logic. Tracy LPN also commented. I was working at one facility where there was a lot of paranormal activity. I was working one night, when we were short-staffed. So I had two floors with four nursing assistants. I was charting on the other floor when all four of the CNAs ran up to the nursing station. And told me that I had to go to this one room immediately, on the other side. All four CNAs were scared. They brought me to this room where a lady resident had passed away. Her bed was by the window, and her roommate's bed was by the door. The nursing assistants were changing the roommate's brief, when all of a sudden, one of the nursing assistants was grabbed on the hip from something behind the privacy curtain. Ella. The lady that had passed. Used to love to grab at staff from behind the privacy curtain, that separated the two beds. Ella also liked to pinch the butts of the workers. I went over to Ella's side of the room, and started to feel around for cold spots, etc. I then said, it's okay, Ella? You can go. As soon as I said that, there was a breeze of cold air, and I saw a grey-white figure rush by the door, 
to her room. All five of us were in that room. Mrs. Murphy's cows chimed in. I was born with a veil over my face, and have had spirits invading my space my whole life. Most are innocuous, some are annoying, only one or two have been harmful. Spirits are around all of us, all the time. But the wall of separation between realities is pretty strong and protects most people from ever having direct contact. But when it's ancestors reaching out, that's quite different from random spirits who stop in. Interesting point, I still have conversations with my mother, who passed away 44 years ago. But not any more often that we did when she was alive. And we even still argue sometimes. But it is comforting to know she's still available when I miss her the most. Don't be afraid of your ancestors reaching out. They want you to get to know them. You could try getting your DNA checked at Ancestry, then start up a family tree. So you have names, DOB, marriages, deaths, places of origin, etc. Top value 7293 also commented. When I was young, I worked in a nursing home. Saw apparitions there. Then worked in a small rural hospital for over 30 years. OMG. Saw, and heard so much stuff there. These kind of places are chock full of emotions and energy and memories of all kinds. Unknown user 7 chimed in. I mean, it makes sense for most hospitals to be haunted. As a lot of people die in hospitals and the reasons for the deaths can often incur something stopping the ghost spirits from entering the next life. Like a strong desire for revenge. Just my opinion though. In the comments below, what do you think about OP's experience? Let's answer OP's question, do you think all hospitals are haunted? This experience was submitted to me from r slash paranormal encounters too. This all takes place in southeast England. I love dark stuff and when I was 17 or 18 I really got into it. Witchcraft, ghosts. I was intrigued, curious, and hungry to know more. I was with my friend Kelsey. We were hanging out quite a bit, and would often go visit and stay around her friends, who lived in a youth hostel. A housing system in Britain to help people live in accommodation, through social services because of other circumstances. As to why they can't live in their own place or with friends or family. Her friends, Nikki and Chris, were very much practicing witchcraft. And talking with spirits. I had always been fascinated by this and would ask to learn what they knew. One time, while speaking with Chris about this, he decided to show me something. To this day and never before that day, had I experienced anything like this. From across the room, while Kelsey and Nikki were busy watching comedy on TV, Chris extended his arm out, the palm of his head facing towards the telly. Chris's eyes rolled to the back of his head, and the TV began going static. Nikki and Kelsey were confused as to why it was playing up. As they were watching a DVD. As seconds passed, the static on the screen increased until you couldn't see or hear anything but static. Kelsey turned round and saw what Chris was doing. And in an annoyed voice told him to knock it off. As soon as he did, the screen came back on and you could hear everything fine. When experimenting with the supernatural, you're going to attract the supernatural. One day, while staying round at the hostel. Nikki had gone to her room to sleep and Kelsey was asleep on the sofa, in the living room. Chris and I were standing in the living room. Having a normal chat for once. Chris was standing beside the balcony door, and I was standing opposite the window of the balcony, about eight feet away. While talking, I spotted a reflection in the window. I paid it no mind, believing it to be Chris's reflection. Until when I turned back to face him, did I realize that where he was standing was basically impossible for him to have a reflection in the window. My heartbeat quickened pace, and I turned my head towards the window again. To see what it was. I was absolutely shocked. There was a reflection in the window, besides me. A tall, burly man, who resembled nothing of Chris. Especially as half his face was scarred with what appeared to be burns. When I paid closer attention to the reflection, the man's eyes were directed onto me. This is when I realized that this was a reflection, but not from outside the balcony window, but inside behind me. I saw the horror on my face, and the man's eyes looked at the reflection and saw I was looking at him. And his eyes were the look of surprise. Chris noticed my reaction, and that I was no longer paying attention to the conversation. 
and asked what was wrong. While talking with Chris, my eyes were back on him. And although scared, I remained curious. And turned towards the window again, to see that the man was no longer there. Chris explained to me who the man was. Although, I am afraid I've forgotten his name. Chris was laughing, telling me there's nothing to be afraid of. That this was a kind spirit, a man who had died in a fire, when his kitchen caught a light in this building. According to Chris, the man was just very interested in our conversation. Although was especially intrigued in what I had to say. When the man realized I could see him, and was scared he felt bad and went away. Thinking I was scared of his face. I was almost an adult, or an adult. This was different than trying to remember ghostly things as a kid. The man's reflection was incredibly tangible. He's the reason I know human souls exist. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. Do you think the entity was just as surprised OP could see him as OP was to see him? I work at a country club, as a bartender. When I first started there, my co-workers told me the place was haunted. But I didn't really worry too much, because when it was mentioned it was always in a joking manner. Well two months ago, I was closing with my manager and one other girl. And we were all cleaning when the phone rang. And it was a call from our GM, asking if everything was okay. We said yeah, why? And he said he received a call from the work number on his cell phone, but didn't hear anything. And it hung up. We thought this was weird, since we were all around the phone when he said he was called. And his personal number isn't saved. Things were quiet for a while, until tonight. I was closing with the same manager and another co-worker. And we grabbing our bags to leave, and we hear furniture being drug along the floor upstairs. We left and tried to blame it on old air ducts. Well we were all sitting outside waiting on my manager's husband to pick her up. Because we didn't want to leave her alone, and we hear tapping on the window behind us. There were three knocks that perfectly imitated the sound of knuckles tapping on a window. I feel sick about it, and honestly terrified. Here are a couple comments, from this post. Peregrine Swift commented. Sorry you are experiencing this. My parents loved country clubs. Avid golfers. And were members of a few. They mainly were converted from very old estates, with lots of history. I don't know if your country club is one of these. Bars attract this kind of energy anyway. But if you have a building with a history or land, that's had traumatic events, this kind of activity is more common than you think. We are also building up to a full moon, that can spike energy. People in the club provide all kinds of energy, for spirit to manifest. You don't say that this is getting physical. From what you wrote, it seems like the usual hauntings, I have encountered. You can take steps to protect yourself. I don't know what your beliefs are, but try googling psychic self-defense. I wear black tourmaline, especially if I know I'm going to be encountering something paranormal. Not everything is evil, or out to harm. Some just want attention. Some are practical jokers. It's likely there's more than one spirit here. We coexist with spirits all the time, but most people are just not aware. It's also just as likely that spirits think where you work is their place and wonder what you are doing there. Please don't be terrified. Try and stay calm. Remove yourself from the situation, if you get anxiety or panic. You could ask your manager to have the club cleansed or blessed. Good luck and do a little research on the country club. You might find out why these events are occurring. Insect Devil also commented. Ask around and get stories from other people. See if it's best to acknowledge the ghost or to leave it alone. Best scenario. It gets bored, and wants to be left alone or acknowledged, but the opposite could be true. And you could make it mad or feed it power. Emotional. If it scares you, tell it to leave you alone. But nicely. A quick side note. Don't communicate with supernatural beings unless you're under the supervision of an experienced practitioner. And they have deemed it safe. Bad things happen to those who dabble. In the comments below, what do you think about OP's experience? Do you think OP saw a spirit or was it something more sinister? This has been a crazy ride. And I'll bring you any updates, in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing.
If you want to catch more episodes in the hauntings, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoy this content, smash the like button, and leave a comment down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out. Just let me know your preference, in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.